This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. The worst, most scandalous thing about the Francis reign over the church has not been the Pacamama debacle. That was certainly an evil, wicked thing he permitted to be done in the church, and that continues to be done in the church, as I'll show you in, later in the week, but it's not the worst. Rather, the Pacamama debacle was a symptom of the larger problem in the church. The hierarchy, led by a man sitting on the throne of Peter, has been for decades now crafting a new religion. Only under Francis is it more overtly obvious than it had been before him, though we get hints of that in the past. Today I have the most scandalous, nakedly heretical thing Francis may have ever said. And the Francis apologists are doing the typical song and dance of claiming that he is being mistranslated again, making Francis the most mistranslated man in human history if this is true. The statement came from a recent talk Francis gave to some seminarians. And here it is on your screen now with official Vatican captioning. In it, he is saying that he is, it is not licit to proselytize, that it's bad to convince others of the rightness of our faith, and that you are, that, you know, for us to tell others that they are wrong in theirs. He is calling spreading the gospel a sin in a categorical rejection of the Great Commission and the dogma extra ecclesia nulla salis. The Great Commission is where Christ commanded the disciples and the apostles to go forth to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and to continue teaching them all that Christ taught to them. And extra ecclesia nulla salis is the dogma that says there's no faith outside the church. As Eric Sammons, editor-in-chief of Crisis Magazine, said about this on Twitter, quote, Pope Francis has been consistently allergic to evangelization. I wrote about this in my book, Deadly Indifference, and in my mind, it's the biggest scandal in the pontificate full of them. We are commanded by Christ to spread the gospel. It is a duty of all Catholics, end quote. Christ commanded us, but Francis disposes us of that duty, because apparently in the mind of Francis, Christ was wrong to command us to do this. Or so the logic has to be, because I can't come up with an alternative. This is the new religion, folks. Francis isn't the first to say this either. Benedict XVI once stated that the dogma of the faith, extra ecclesium nulla salis, had been overturned by Vatican II, which is itself nonsense. You can't overturn a dogma of the faith, but the attitude is that the church overturned many of its prior teachings at the council. This thinking permeates everything today, too, unfortunately, and has received official endorsement from the Vatican in its never-ending revolution. And this never-ending revolution is perfectly encapsulated in a new document released by the Working Group for the Synod on Synodality, a, getting called a continental document because it was made in Europe. And it will guide what the institution calling itself the Catholic Church will decide for the next two years. Like the Amazon Synod in 2019, this synod produced a document that called for radical changes to the faith that Francis will probably not go fully in on, because that's not his style, but he will instead issue some ambiguous document that can be read really any way the reader wants to read it. And it will be read that way, at least until one radical bishop's conference implements the most radical reading of Francis's final document possible, to which Francis will himself declare that reading to be the right one. That was how Amoris Laetitia after the Synod on the Family was implemented, where we got communion for the divorced and remarried, even though that was not ever allowed before. That is a radical change to the faith that happened at that time. So we'll almost certainly be here the new religion is fully asserting itself with the synod on synodality, a religion that does not permit judging or the true evangelization. Let's give you some context here. Headline from LifeSite. Vatican's new synodal document calls for, quote, female diaconate and radical inclusion. The synod on synodality, now officially extended until 2024, called for a permanent aggiornamento in light of the Second Vatican Council. You probably have heard the word aggiornamento. But you may not know what it means. At the most basic level, it means to bring up to date, which is a troubling definition by itself since up to date is a rather secular concept. The church is timeless. The faith is timeless. It does not need to be brought up to date. Benedict XVI of 2012 said that giornamento means, quote, the Christian faith is always new and ever young. The vitality of the faith must be constantly renewed, but this can only come from the strength of people who, keep, who have deep roots in God. It cannot come from those who adapt themselves to the passing moment, from those who chose the easiest path, end quote. 
Now, his definition is probably not what the synod on synodality big brains think a giornamento means. Frankly, I suspect that bring up to date is a more honest definition, given that Francis and the heretics around him have rejected Benedict's hermeneutic of continuity, which Benedict, based on his concept of a giornamento, or at least he based his concept of a giornamento off of being able to read the changes after the council in light of tradition. Let's find out what the Synod on Synodality thinks a giornamento means, though, because you're, <laughs> this is kind of wild. From the LifeSite News article, quote, The Synod on Synodality has already been compared to the Second Vatican Council and described by commentators as promoting a, quote, parallel church. Such a description was supported by the text of the new document, which noted that the, quote, conversion and reform of the Synod, quote, translates into an equally continuous reform of the church, its structures and its style in the wake of the desire for a permanent aggiornamento, a precious legacy of the Second Vatican Council, to which we are called to turn on its 60th anniversary. In an apparent abandonment of adherence to Catholic doctrine or principles, the document stated when describing the way forward that the message of the synodal journey is simple. We learn to walk together and sit together to break the same bread so that Everyone could find their place. Uh, everyone is called to take part in this journey. No one is excluded. This is what we feel called to do in order to credibly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to all peoples. This is the road we seek to follow for the continental stage, in what is one of the rare occasions of a description of synodality itself. The DCS outlines how the synod deals with the many quote-unquote tensions highlighted during the event. And I'm quoting it. A synodal spirituality can only be one that welcomes differences and fosters harmony and that draws from the tensions, the energy to move forward. End quote. That's actually fairly far down in the synodal art the article from Life Science on the Synod of Synodality, but it tells us something key. The synod leaders are going with the quote ongoing permanent change, permanent revolution definition of a giornamento, which isn't surprising. The Continental document for the so-called Synod on Synodality calls for the church to change its teaching on the James Martin sin, the ordination of women through the creation of a female diaconate, and numerous other changes to the faith. As in all changes to the faith, modernists claim to have found that the church was really doing whatever it is they want to change now, back in the ancient earlier days of the faith. They're engaging in something called archaeologism, which I've made videos on before, a concept, something that is condemned by Pius XII. The classic example of, is that the Bible mentions a female deacon. Ergo, women were ordained in the ancient church according to their argument. It's their claim, and it's not true. As Trent Horn points out on Twitter, quote, Women served as deaconesses, but they were not ordained like presbyters, priests. The Council of Nicaea declared in Canon 19, quote, We mean by deaconesses such as have assumed the habit, but who, since they have no imposition of hands, are to be numbered only among the laity. End quote. Sounds a lot more like a nun with special duties more than anything else. But I guess having an infallible council declare something isn't good enough, since the core of the problem is the modernists don't actually believe in infallibility of anything, but the infallibility of the moment. And yes, I know Trent Horn is part of the conservative Novus Ordo establishment and really isn't helping matters through his typical defense of all things Francis, but he's not wrong here. There is no historical evidence for the deaconess argument that the modernists make. Now, Rorote Celli has an interesting write-up on the document on their website. In their write-up, they note one hopeful sign. The document admits that it's not a product of the magisterium of the church, which means it can be cast into the dustbin at the right time. And while that's a hopeful sign, it's worth reminding everyone that this document will be given to Francis, who will make a more moderate version of it that will, over the course of the following years, be implemented in line with more in line more with this document than with the explicit content of the one he himself publishes. As we saw with Amoris Letizia or the recent blessings of James Martin Unions by the bishops of Belgium, Rorate Celi also points out that the document clearly endorses never-ending revolution in the church, meaning if they get their way, we'll be in this aggiornamento thing forever, which we already know Francis is a fan of. As a sign of this, the document even calls for a this even is hard for me to say, but it even calls for the accompaniment, meaning endorsement of those living in poly relationships, meaning physical relationships that involve more than two people. 
complete with all the intimacy and all the rest of it. Yeah, all of it. That document calls for that. Which brings me back to Francis's most scandalous statements, which I restarted with. Remember, Francis is constantly deriding traditionalists for being rigid and neo-pharisaical and guardians of tradition and whatever. He does that because there is no way that most of us are going to sit quietly by and allow the church to endorse not spreading the gospel, throwing out the moral teachings of the faith, and creating this fake new church that Francis is participating in the construction of and that will probably continue after he's gone. Remember, what Francis said about spreading the gospel and how it was not licit to convince others of the rightness of the faith. Many people have mixed feelings about Fulton Sheen, but uh, was he wrong when he warned us of this in 1948? Quote, Satan will set up a counter church, which will be the ape of the church. It will have all the notes and characteristics of the church, but in reverse and emptied of its divine content. The false prophet will have a religion without a cross, a religion without a world to come, a religion to destroy religions. There will be a counterfeit church. Christ's church will be one, and the false prophet will create an another. The false church will be worldly, ecumenical, and global. It will be a loose federation of churches and religions, forming some type of global association, a world parliament of churches. It will be emptied of all divine content. It will be the mystical body of the Antichrist. The mystical body on earth today will have its Judas Iscariot, and he will be the false prophet. End quote. Sheen said this 75 years ago. Say what you want about his role in Vatican II later on, but it was 100% on point there. But what is Francis's endgame here? Is he just doing the work of his own shadowy handlers that they are demanding of him? Remember, he said when he was made Pope, they, he was just running a program that was given to him. Is he merely a tool in someone else's game? Or is he trying to remake the church because he honestly believes that the Catholic Church got it so horribly wrong in the past? Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As does sharing this on social media, that helps a lot as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.